Hello YouTube. In this video, I'm going to seek to answer the question, can ectomorphs get buff, ripped, and strong? And to be able to answer that question accurately, I'm going to use our favorite website, nadionot.com. And they found it interesting and important to add that within that article that they wrote about the topic, they included brutal honesty. Usually when people tell you that they're going to be brutally honest, it's a way for them to preemptively prepare you for bullshit that they're going to spew and present that as some sort of like unfathomable truth that is going to be so shocking you're going to reject it. In a sense, it's an admission of failure. It's people who tell you that they are not going to be able to convince you with their words and therefore they are trying to pretend that the reason why you're not going to be receptive is because it's too honest. Like the honesty is too strong and your ego is just rejecting it. Of course, that's complete nonsense as we're going to see together. So that person starts, the, the guy who, who writes this forum, whose name is Truthseeker, starts by saying that ever since he joined the dirty muscle game, so that's already a, that's already a, a bad sign. When someone is so disillusioned with lifting, that they have started to call this entire thing that we do and love dirty. What is dirty is YouTube fitness. It's not the muscle game. The muscle game is pure. It's always been pure and it will always be because it is just a natural expression of nature. People who make money out of that natural expression are the dirty ones. But resentment towards your own biology and towards the game, quote unquote, and lifting is a sign that you've been blackpilled and you are starting to resent something because you're not good at it instead of actually just looking at yourself and realizing that it's your fault. It's not the muscle game's fault that you're small. It's just that you are not effective in your methods. I've been hearing a multitude of nonsensical claims in reference to ectomorphs fighting gravity. So, see, it's sentence two, and I'm already fed up with the article. For one simple reason. One, there is no such thing as an ectomorph. It's a scientific term that is being thrown around that has no basis in reality because there is no established separation in categories in humans of ectomorphs and endomorphs that just simply does not exist. And it's just an excuse that skinny guys use to explain why they're skinny. And then, fighting gravity... Muscle, muscle building is not gravity. I mean, lifting weights and leverages is, but the action of breaking down muscle fibers is completely unrelated. So I don't know why he decided to use that. Uh, maybe because it sounded cool. Luckily, I'm about to destroy the majestic stupidity sprained by the mainstream megaphones. He's the mainstream megaphones. I, I don't think he realizes that. People who try to discourage others, especially discourage young, tall, skinny men, are... Plenty, and actually I could cite you 15 on YouTube Fitness, who tell you, oh, you'll never do anything, you'll be skinny forever, unless you take drugs. That's everyone. So for, for these types, it's always the same thing. They like to think that they're counterculture and rebellious, when in reality, they're just like everyone else. This is a very mainstream position to have. And But he does say that he won't waste your time with low IQ concepts based on unnatural positive philosophies even though he's spreading something that is completely unnatural. So this is for the introduction. I'm not going to cite the guy too much because the article is really long to answer a very simple question, as you will see. But I'm going to take the gist of it and try and explain to you why he's completely wrong and why uh, the very plight that ectomorphs have started to push upon themselves is just a fabrication of their mind because he is an excellent example of that very same fabrication. So, his entire thesis is this. Ectomorphs cannot get big naturally because our bones are incredibly slim and often in the company of short muscle bellies. Another trait that sometimes accompanies ectomorphism is low testosterone. So, eventually, essentially what he's presenting to you is He's telling you that ectomorphs are people who are going to be thinner with short muscle bellies and low test. That's not being an ectomorph. I don't know where he found that definition. An ectomorph, if you look again at the definition that is incorrect, 
is someone who has long segment, usually a high metabolism and a difficulty to fill out. What he's describing is someone with very bad genetics. But more importantly than that, let's look at what he defines as ectomorphism and what he believes is the reason why he cannot get big. Because he says, cannot get big. So for him, if you're an ectomorph, that's it. Like you were destined to be small for the rest of your life. So small and slim bones. That is a very widespread idea. Actually, I discussed that in the forum video in the description. A lot of people think that if you have small bones, that's it. Like you can just give up, you will never have big muscles. The issue with this is that it's based on pseudoscience, just like somatotypes. A lot of people look at guys who are really big and they see a thick structure and thick bones. So they think to themselves, okay, this must be the reason why they're big, without realizing that this could just be that the guy is big boned, quote unquote, and therefore has an ability to put on mass. But just because that guy has a an easier time being big, visually big, does not mean that you cannot. And I think I'm a very good example of that. When I hear people complain about slim bones, I crack up because I have very slim and thin bones and a very small frame and structure. I have very narrow shoulders, I have very tiny wrists, I have tiny ankles, tiny knees. All in me is small. There's not a single bone in my body that is thick or even average. All of it is below average. I, is below, beside my height, I have the structure of a much shorter man. And yet I managed to get big. Why? Because I never went on that type of website when I got started. I never went on those black pilled fucking forums discussing with other idiots and losers trying to make myself feel better. I just lifted and therefore I grew. Same for the muscle belly bullshit. I mean, if you want an example of what I mean, if you look at this, okay? Is this a long insertion? No, it's not. I can fit two fingers on the tendon. It's a medium, even slightly short insertion, and yet it's big. So one plus one equals two. Just because you have bad insertions does not mean that you're going to have small muscles. It just means that the muscle is going to have a different look. But using that as an excuse to explain why you can't get big is pathetic. And then you have the load test. And I blame pro bodybuilders for that. Testosterone is just very important, but not in the way these type of guys think. These guys think that if you don't have the hormonal profile of a male elephant, then you're going to be small forever. That's not true. You can have an average test level and still produce and get muscles. And the good thing too is that your test levels are going to increase as you get more anabolic, as you train. So using that as an excuse to never train is the reason why you're low test in the first place. Also, there is absolutely no correlation between ectomorphism and load test that has never been proven. Usually guys who are very slim and very tall and who can put on mass, it's not that they don't have enough tests, they have plenty of tests, it's that they don't eat enough to convert the calories into mass. Your testosterone cannot work with nothing. It needs something to transform uh, your exercise and your muscle fiber damage into mass. You will not gain mass if you are constantly in a deficit. That should be a given. And to him, but to him again, when you combine these three elements, you get an ecto desperately scrolling through endless cell results to turn into a muscular beast. So he's essentially describing his life. And in a sense, he's correct. If you're in that case and you're just looking for the magical solution, there is none because the category that you put yourself in doesn't exist. You're the equivalent of someone who thinks that they have, I don't know, some sort of weird flu, and they're looking for a re remedy to the flu on the internet and they don't find it. So they tell themselves, okay, I'm stuck with that for the rest of my life. Well, no, you invented that flu. You don't have that flu, and you're looking for a remedy for something that doesn't exist. So of course you came up short. Ectomorphs who type, how do I stop being an ectomorph? You're not an ectomorph to start with. So you're not going to find a way to get out of it. That should be obvious. But to him, it's the sign that it's over. You know that sentence, it's over? A lot of guys love to say this because they think it makes them enlightened. Giving up on life and saying, well, I'm done, it's, there's, there's no tomorrow, is not being enlightened. It's called being a wimp. It's not wisdom, it's stupidity, always. But to him, he's saving you the trouble because the mystic program that you search does not exist. So for him... 
if you are an ectomorph, aka small, you can you can do whatever you want. There is no program that will put on mass. And that is a sign of someone who has lost trust and faith in muscle building. And as I told you, it was evident in the first few sentences, he is convinced that training does not have the ability to build muscle. Once you have that type of mindset into your head, it's over. In a sense, it is over. Might as well just stop playing tennis because you're not going to put the energy that you need into your workout because you think they do nothing, right? If I told you that studying doesn't work to get good grades, you would stop studying because you would think that it doesn't really make any sense. But that's the type of uh, stupidity that this guy is spouting. And I want you to know one thing. I, before making this video, of course, I did some research and uh, it's always the same when I'm going to make an Eddie Arnott video, an Eddie Arnott.com video. I always think that I'm going to have a tough time finding a, a, a subject. Then I go into the search of his website and within like 15 seconds, I find an article that makes me want to just chuck rocks at my screen and I pick it and I read it. And of course, it's full of bullshit. I've even questioned whether or not the guy was a troll, a very elaborate troll, but I don't think so. I think he's just that pathetic. And therefore, he serves as a good example uh, as to what we should not be like. After that, he likes to explain to you, first off, he, he does that all the time. He precedes what he's going to say by saying, this is a savage statement. Like, are you having a good time joking yourself off? Telling people like, oh, I'm going to be brutally honest. The type of people who type like this tend to be little twerps in general, like sa savage statements. No, you're just telling people what they want to hear. Telling people, hey, you're going to be small forever is exactly the type of sentence that people who are looking for excuses are searching for on the internet. And maybe you're concerned, maybe you're the type of person who does that. Or you have a shit life and you get no girls or whatever, and you're looking for incel or men going their own way forums to justify your sad existence. That's exactly what he's doing here. He's providing excuses to people. It's not savage. Again, it's the sign of a wimp. Because to him, if you don't do that, you're going to bang your head against the wall for nothing. Yeah, the wall is called not knowing how to program. That is exactly that wall. I know many small skinny men who have been training for, for a long, long time, as long as I, who are not even close to my physique. Why? Because when they see a wall, they run into it. Right? That, that's, the, that's the saying, banging your head. When do you bang your head? Well, because there's a wall. But did you know that you can climb the wall? Did you know that you can go around, you can dynamite the wall? You don't just have to butt your head against it. That is a mark of someone who is deeply, again, stupid. Then uh, he continues, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I'm going to take the excerpt that I think are funny. He explained to, explains to you why bones are so important, and he uses a, a, what I can only describe as a, an amazing example where he tells you Brad Pitt wouldn't be Brad Pitt without the shape of his skull. Thank you for that enlightening truth, Mr. Seeker. Wow, I am mind blown. So you're telling me that if Brad Pitt's face wasn't Brad Pitt's face, then it wouldn't be Brad Pitt's face. Wow, amazing. What, what, what else do you have to offer? Oh, genius. Michael Jordan wouldn't be Michael Jordan if he was five feet tall. Yes, again, very true. I mean, those are objective statements that read add nothing to the debate. But see, what he's trying to do here is this. He's trying to tell you that your life sucks, not because you suck, but because you were predetermined at birth to be a loser. And he's telling you that people like Brad Pitt were predetermined to be players or movie stars or rich. You know, I know guys who look as good as Brad Pitt and they make burgers at McDonald's. You know why? Because they never worked and they never actually tried to get anywhere. Just because you look good doesn't think, mean that your life is going to be great. I can tell you for a fact that this guy is ugly. And I know that he's ugly because he has a deeply rooted resentment for beautiful people. Because he thinks that everything comes easy to them, which is not true, but it makes his life easier. Same for Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan actually had a tough time before he entered college and he struggled. Even after his growth spurt, he wasn't the amazing player that he became. He became Michael Jordan because he worked a ton. I think MG was 6'6". It's not that tall. In the NBA nowadays, 6'6 is below average. The average of the NBA nowadays is 6'8". And yet he dominated. 
dunking on people who are seven feet tall. Why? Because he worked his ass off. He, just because you're tall doesn't make you good at basketball. So again, very stupid and very reductive examples. But he uses that to say that bones have a tremendous influence on muscular growth too, which is not fucking true. And I'm going to explain to you why. It's so simple and yet it boggles the mind that people don't get it. If the circumference of your bone is, let's say, let's say one finger, okay? And you have muscle around your bone and let's say you have three centimeters on each side. Let's say that someone else who had a bone that is this thick had the same amount of muscle. Who is bigger? The one with the bigger bone. Why? Because it pushes the muscle and it gives the impression that it's bigger. Do they have more muscle? No, they have more bone. So the idea that this means that people with thicker bones build more muscle is untrue. Visually, they look bigger because they have more base underneath the muscle fiber, but they don't build more muscle. So don't use that as an example and an excuse to not train. Yes, you will look smaller than someone with a bigger frame. So what? You're in there for yourself, right? Or are you in there to compare your penis with other people in public? Who does that? You need to be deeply deluded and disconnected from social life to think that this matters. And I see that on Black Pilt Forum a ton too. People who say, oh, I, I won't lift because I have a small frame and if I go out in public, a guy with a big frame is going to mug me, okay? And the, first off, you don't go out in public. And two, do, does it matter? I've, I've always questioned myself if these people really think that this matters. Are you that insecure that having someone be bigger or taller than you makes you feel bad? If anything, it should be inspiring or just something that you don't even pay attention to. I live in a region of the world where there's a ton of tall people. Never once in my life have I thought, hmm, I feel emasculated because that guy is taller or bigger. Never once. Because I am confident. Build confidence and all of that bullshit will go away. And you can actually focus on what's important. And he says that a man with 7.5 inches will naturally have bigger arms than someone with 6.5. And he says, someone like me. Hey, guess what, truth seeker? You're 6.25, that's exactly my size of wrist. We have the same size of wrist. So what happened with me? I'm the same slim boned uh, that you are, but somehow I managed to get big. So what does it say about you? That maybe you suck? That maybe you're using ex excuses to justify why you're small? I think that's it. He, constitu he continues by saying that he's going to explain with barbarian simplicity, which means absolutely nothing, that if you search for images of female volleyball players, which I know a lot of you guys have done, but not for the same reason that he did, uh, you will see that these women are big even by male standards. Yes, because they're tall, because it's a tall sport. They owe their si size to bones. A woman with a large skeleton can easily dwarf a dude with a fragile and modest structure. Okay, you know what that is? That is someone who went out in public and got mugged by a woman and went home and typed that article while crying into his breeches. This is exactly what happened, I can guarantee you. Because that guy reeks. The type of desperation and low energy and small dick energy that women hate. And typically these dudes are also the ones that feel threatened when a woman is taller than them. Because they can't handle it. I have a newsflash for you. If you go out in public and there's a woman that is wider than you in the shoulders and more muscular, one of two things happen. One, she's taking a massive amount of drugs. Or two, you're a wimp. I cannot personally be dwarfed by a woman. It's not possible. She can be taller than me, but in terms of size and, and just mass, I'm going to be bigger. Naturally by default. Not once in my life have I met a woman bigger than me. It's just because they don't have the ability in their body to do that. But if you're a male and women are bigger than you, you have to question yourself. You have to look at yourself in the mirror and think, okay, I have the advantage of producing massive amount of androgynous hormones and yet she's bigger than me. Is it because she was blessed with a bone structure that is making her bigger or is it because I don't train enough? The answer is fairly simple. Understand also that women are not built to dwarf. Their upper bodies are small on purpose by design because it's just not something that they need. We need that upper body because evolution dictates that we need to be able to throw things. So if 
literally tens of thousands of years of evolution, even way more than that, have led to you looking at a woman taller and thinking, oh, I suck as a man. There is a lot of work to be done here. And he continues, I'm not going to, uh, to give any thought to the rest because he is just the same continuation. I really feel like that guy is talking to himself in his articles. If you put the natural muscles of a man with a small frame on a robust bro, you will short the skeletal muscular system of the big bro. That means absolutely nothing. I don't understand what he's trying to get at. Yeah, if you put the muscle of someone who has a small frame on someone with a big frame, he looks bigger. Duh. How is that even a surprise? Let's stop with the bone thing. Then he talks about muscle bellies. And this one is full of cope again. He mentions Sergio Olivia. And it's something that I've noticed with that type of guy. Uh, they are obsessed with pro bodybuilders. And it's interesting too, because you would think that someone like him who is exposing the dirty muscle game would realize that a lot of the issues that are plaguing or sport come from pro bodybuilding. And yet he constantly promotes them and their stupid ideals and their stupid way of training. And he uses them always as examples. It's not a good example because you are again trying to compare two people who are on drugs to tell natural lifters that it's stupid to lift because they don't have good insertions. First off, and that goes for you also who's watching, almost no one knows what their insertion is. And it's something I've noticed with time where I have several times thought that I had bad insertion on muscles just to then train them enough for like a year and a half or two years to then realize that, hey, I actually have decent insertions. It's just that the muscle was small. For you, most likely, you are telling yourself that your calves have bad insertions because you never trained them and they're small, if you gave it some time, you would realize that your insertion is not that bad. Same for your lats. Lats is the big one. A lot of people think, oh, I have high lats. No, you don't. You just don't train them enough to even see them where they insert. So just train. But to him, many ectomorphs have short muscle bellies at the bicep, arm string, calves, forearms. So essentially, he's looking at his own body. It's small. And instead of thinking, okay, I'm small because I never train. He's thinking it's because of his insertions. Newsflash, regardless of your insertions, you can make the muscle bigger. And it's a point I already made in the forum video. Uh, arm string in particular. If you have short insertions for your arm string, guess what's going to happen when you train them? They're going to look amazing because they're going to pop. You're going to have an insane curve because they're short. So you're stacking more mass on the same, uh, on a much smaller surface area so it's going to look bigger same for the bicep stop just giving up by out of principle and actually give it a try you will be surprised to the actual potential of your body then he discusses bodily chemistry and he's saying that he's not a fan of natural testosterone boosting when the goal is extra muscular development which is in a sense correct focusing on on boosting your testosterone is not the way to go you need to focus on training, which is going to naturally boost your testosterone. All of the people who are selling you test boosters and take that herb and take that pill to get more tests, it's either actual steroids or it's just bunk. It doesn't work. But to him, the reason why he says that is, of course, that a man's testosterone baseline has to increase monumentally to elicit additional muscle synthesis. I've touched on that in my video about boomers. Again, this is a sign of someone who despite liking to spout all of that rhetoric about low IQ, is most likely very low IQ because he doesn't have the ability to understand complex concepts. The second a concept branches out, his brain just short circuits and he's out. I showed that with the bone thing where he just cannot understand that, yes, if the bone is bigger, the muscle is bigger, not because it is bigger, but because it is spread out and just expanded by the bone. Here... He's telling you that in order to have a boost in muscle, you need a peak in test. But he visualizes it on only one axis. He only looks at, in this case, the vertical axis and not at the horizontal. The vertical is the amount of test. The horizontal is time. And when time goes, your test is going to either stay the same or slowly increase. And guess what it does? It accumulates the muscle is not responsive to hikes and spikes in tests because it doesn't have the ability to just 
don't know, take a shot of a, a thousand milligrams of train and transform that into muscle. The train is tricking the system into prioritizing muscle growth. And therefore, regardless of the amount you inject, you need to give it time. Because what is going to make the muscle grow is the hyphen protein synthesis and also the proliferation of cells in the muscle and the multiplication, which grows the potential of the muscle by default via the drug. So if you take away the drug and you look at it from the natural standpoint, if you train every day, you're exposed to your testosterone every day, right? Your test levels don't take a break. Your testes are always working the hardest. And therefore, even though there is no monumental increase, there is one in time. So instead of trying to visualize it as a spike like this, try and look at it as if this line that is slowly increasing was added to like a, an anabolic bank. Every day, that, that stagnation, in a sense, is added. You know what that does? It raises. And the time the muscle spends in that anabolic environment raises as well. So, even though there was technically no spikes on paper, the muscle still grew from the test. And this is something that you need to take to heart. It's not that hard to understand at all, but people like him never get it. Because they are living in a constant fantasy of potentially one day taking drugs, and they don't even understand the reason why drugs work in the first place. These are the type who are going to do one cycle and then look at themselves and think, wow, I'm still small. Yeah, genius, it's because you're supposed to do multiple cycles because just injecting a shit ton of drugs at once does nothing to the body. Simple, right? And yet someone like him who worships pro bodybuilders doesn't get that. Funny thing, funny meant that happened recently. I'm not sure 100% if it was him, but I posted a video about uh, upper back training that called Get Yoked. And I got a comment from someone called Truth Seeker telling me that I had a small back and that in, uh, an actual good back was Dorian Yates. Now, I don't know if it was him, but it looks like him, doesn't it? Like, doesn't it look exactly like the type of person who is going to see a natural body that is big and impressive and who's going to try and make that person feel bad by telling them, oh, a drug user who took massive amounts for 20 years has a better back. Yeah, is it something that is supposed to make me feel bad? I know it would make you feel bad, but me, I don't think so. But it shows also the mindset of that person. He is incapable of being big, so he worships people who are the, the most massive, pro bodybuilders, and in the meanwhile, he, continu he, he continuously separates himself from the natural lifting game because he's incapable of achieving anything in it. So that was for that, uh, saying that most of the benefits that you get from optimizing your test levels naturally are outside of the muscle construction spectrum. That means nothing. See, um, I think that a lot of people who get sucked into these websites, and it goes for all of the black pill forms, essentially, are especially easy to, um, to impress with uh, vocabulary. As long as the sentences you make sound impressive, they, they buy into that because they're like, oh, he's intelligent. Like he's that, that wizard that has pierced the secrets of the universe and therefore I need to listen to him. Understand that the sentence I just read literally means nothing in English. Like there is no meaning. And a ton of the time he does that. And I don't think he's doing that thinking it means something. I think he's doing that to throw dust into your eyes because he's basically trying to confuse you in a sense. Because you're never going to actually take the time to read the sentence properly and realize that it makes no sense. And he continues with the cope. Having an optimal test chart is a highly desirable condition. It fuels you with energy to attack the gym and life in general. So we went from someone who writes an article to explain why he's small and why ectomorphs are small forever that has devolved in him complaining that he has no energy in life. Yeah, he might be low test, but it's not because he's an ectomorph, he's a modern male. There's a difference. He's most likely the type of guy who plays video games, never takes the sun, barely even, tra even trains, consumes poisonous media all the time, and then he looks at himself and he feels terrible. Well, no duh, I mean, you did that to yourself. Everyone can be energetic. Everyone can have energy to attack the, the gym and life in general, but you have to actually want it. You have, you have to actually do it. Energy, yes, is, is a product of your hormones, but it's also up there. 
if you don't have an aggressive mindset in life, uh, I can inject you with like pure caffeine. It's not going to change the fact that you're going to achieve nothing. Then the third, the fourth headline after the entire thing with bones, etc., where he actually gets into the topic, do ectomorphs have the worst body type for bodybuilding? And he's saying yes. He's saying that they're not built for it. And he doesn't care what positive thinkers say. This is the problem. Because I know that a lot of people, or a few guys, think the same way. You think that you're just not made for it. And that also means that you have bought into the idea that some people were made for it. Some people were built different. And they were just, I guess, predestined to bodybuilding. That's not true. Save for like the 1%, and that is even generous, the 0.1% genetic freaks that, yes, are incredibly gifted for bodybuilding. The vast majority of us were just average Joes. I'm super, I'm Mr. Average, but it doesn't matter. Why are you comparing yourself to the elite? You're not going to compete against them. They have nothing to do with your life. Just focus on yourself and train. That's what I do. I'm average. I'm bigger than 99% of the population, so you can be too. So there's no such thing as someone who's not gifted for natural bodybuilding. You just have to actually try. And if you try, you will find that eh, you have proven that uh, you are actually gifted. Because if, again, we follow his idea and the entire concept around ectomorphs to start with, if you go back and you look at my pictures when I was younger, I was a pure ectomorph. I was like this. My arms were like this. Like they were pure spaghettis. I was super thin with very small legs a very small frame, everything. And I have pictures to prove that. It's not like I'm just bullshitting you. And yet, look at me now. Look at my evolution. I went from ectomorph to what some people would call, what is the term that they use? Endomorph, I guess. Mesomorph is the fat ones. So, uh, and no, endomorph is the fat ones. Mesomorph is the other one. I don't know. There's one of the two that is desirable and that people love to say, oh, I'm this because I'm, I'm like Hercules and I build muscle. Yeah, nonsense. You're just someone who trained. It just, again, stop joking yourself off and just accept that you got to where you are because of your hard work. That should be something that people do, right? But for me, I left ectomorphism behind. Interesting, right? It's as if it never existed in the first place. It's just called being skinny, guys. As you grow and as you become more anabolic and you train, you're going to become a man, meaning that you're going to be actually muscular. But if you buy into the black pill, you're going to stay a boy for the rest of your life. And that very same boy is trying to tell you that muscle scholars try to brainwash you into what? Believing in yourself? Actually training hard? See, this is my issue with these people. They think they know hidden truths of the universe, but all of it boils down to a negative mindset that is just telling people to give up. If that is the truth of the universe, then shouldn't you just shut your pie hole and not say anything? Because by default, it's not something that is going to lead to anything constructive. So I'm not saying he's correct. He's actually very factually incorrect. But see the drive and energy and objective that is behind his words. He's trying to discourage you because he's discouraged himself. He failed and instead of thinking to himself, I suck and I need to fix my life and actually get after it. No, he's telling himself it's not my fault. And to prove it's not my fault, I'm going to generalize the concept and apply it to others. This is ectomorphism 101. All of the people who buy into it and who call themselves ectomorph, you have bought into a self-defeating cult. You have bought into your own misery. It is your own fault because it's comfortable but it's going to lead to a life of mediocrity, so reject that. He continues, that's not interesting at all. He talks about drugs, injecting drugs, never do that, of course. And then he says it's better to be a skinny ecto than a natural born perma balker endomorph, which also doesn't exist. See, he's the type of person who also looks at fat people and say, oh, you were born like this. Like, it's not your fault. No. If you're fat, it is 100% your fault. There's not a single person on earth that cannot lose weight. And see, this mindset is the reason why the entire body positive, positivity movement exists. Because it's all built on excuses. It's all built on trying to find a way to not take personal responsibility. All of these movements are based on that. 
Once you understand that very simple concept, you understand why people follow them. It's because they are either fat souls or skinny dudes who, instead of accepting that they are who they are because of their lifestyle, think that it's because of their genetics. So know that somatotypes do not exist. Simple. Then he talks about the myths about ectomorphs. And he says that the industry keeps presenting ectomorphs as humans with turbine-like metabolisms, saying that they are just in need of course or number of calories, which is correct. He's saying that it's the biggest lie. He's saying that he's been an ectomorph before many of you were even born. Why would you even say that? Like, he's a boomer. You realize that, right? He, this guy is a boomer. You are a just a loser, and you say that we're supposed to listen to you because you were born before, but if you were born before me, you're supposed to be a good role model and do more and know more than me, but you don't. So why should I follow you? And he says, when I up the calories, I always get fat. And that is also typical, by the way, of ectomorphs, who are very skinny, are going to perma bulk, they're going to go and go mad because Ripeto told them, oh, just drink your gallon of milk and you'll be big and strong like me. I don't know what you would take advice from that guy. He looks like a barrel. But they do that and they get fat. And then they're like, just like him, they're like, oh, it's because I'm an ectomorph. I can't build muscle. No, it's because you entered a massive caloric surplus that, yes, was transformed into fat. What do you think life is? An anime? That you're going to eat like 15 roasted pigs and you're going to turn into a massive beast? It's like the, it's the same with the hormonal profile. The lacking piece of the puzzle here is patience. This guy doesn't understand patience, and it is so bad that it actually influences his understanding of the wood. Because he doesn't get that calories by themselves do nothing. They need to be guided. It's the reason why I say, and I said on the channel in the past, that skinny guys shouldn't dirty bulk, and they shouldn't bulk aggressively because you're just going to get fat. So there's no point you're going to become skinny fat with massive love handles. What you need is enough caloric surplus to guide the growth, to actually trigger growth, and then lift. Diet and lifting, not just diet. And I know that he he's exactly the type of person who does this, who focuses on diet. If you're small, eating will make you bigger, yes, but with fat. The stimulus and the condition that is going to guarantee muscle is the lifting. So you need to do both and you need to be patient. A small surplus, very small. For you, the beautiful thing about people who are skinny is that you'll build muscle with the surplus and fat. But guess what? It's going to be subcutaneous and intramuscular fat. So you'll look bigger, you'll fill out. But if you just shove burgers into your face and expect results, you're going to be like him. And you're going to be also telling people that uh, ectomorphs are just like this, doomed. You're doomed. You're going to be small forever. And that's not true. Because for him, ectomorphs shouldn't bulk, as this is the fattest path to becoming a skinny fat bro, only if you overfeed. A condition in which you are both underweight and overweight due to a severe lack of muscles, which is called not training hard enough, and a high body fat. And yet the specialists never stop telling just eat more. Yeah, don't eat more, lift more and fuel that with the eating. Chapter two is, do ectomorphs struggle to build muscle? And he's saying that no, they don't. They don't struggle to build muscle on top of their natural base any more than the other somatotypes, which do not exist. He's that the truth is that all men have a hard time getting buff. No, it's just take, it just takes a long time. There's a difference between something that's hard and something that's long. Walking 20 miles is not hard. It's long. Learning Chinese is not hard. It's long. If you cannot make the distinction between the two, you are going to continuously quit in your life because every single obstacle is going to look insurmountable like a wall, when in reality, it might just be a path, right? That wall, if you looked at it with lateral thinking, would be a path to be walked so instead of having to climb something that is impossible, you would walk on it. So yes, it's going to take a long time, but it's going to be cleared eventually. You just have to be very patient. And then he does the frame thing again, saying that ectomorphs are small because of their frames, which is nonsense. I already explained that. 
he talks about strength afterwards. Strength is not my thing, so I'm not going to spend any time on it. Uh, so it's not super uh, relevant to the discussion that we have today. And then he talks about training. So that's interesting because he continuously rejects the idea that training is important, but now he somehow embraces it. And this is the one moment in the article where he makes sense, which is always something that I like to actually point out because it happens so rarely that it's worth mentioning. Many stupid sites will fill your tormented head with recipes and complicated routines based on bro science. Back in the day, I read that ectomorph shouldn't live longer than 55 minutes. I read that too. Why? What happens to an ectomorph after the time frame? Do we melt? Of course not. So here is actually correct. A lot of people will tell you, oh, if you're small, don't train a lot because you'll be catabolic and you'll lose muscles. That's nonsense. The body is not that weak that it would just lose muscle like this. Autophagy is triggered by intense bouts of, of fasting, not lifting weights. If the muscle started to devour itself the second it spends too much energy expanding and moving, we wouldn't exist. Humans would have went extinct a long, long time ago. So what I say is train the amount of time needed to damage the baseline. And if you're very skinny, most likely you have low muscular mass. So you have low muscular endurance. So the amount of time it takes to actually get there is low. It's the reason why your, your, your actual uh, segments or sessions will not be as long as most people, but it's not because you're just doomed, it's because you're building up to longer workouts and work capacity. To him, there's no blueprints to uh, reverse ectomorphism. If you want to train with a high volume, do it, etc., etc. So he's actually correct. Do whatever you want, just train. It's always interesting to see that people who are like 99% wrong still manage to be 1% correct but it makes them even more stupid because if they had the ability to, again, create complex systems in their brain, they would realize that, hey, if that 1% is correct, then maybe the rest of my argumentation isn't. And then by a, what I can only describe as a spider wave type system, they would manage to get back to the root of the problem, which is the center, and realize that their entire idea that ectomorphs cannot get big is untrue. He finishes with acceptance. Life's cold. No, it's not. It's beautiful. I often feel like we're well, nothing but scripts running on a big computer. Do you feel the guy who's trying to like appear big brained? I, I work in AI. I can tell you that I meet a lot of these types. The people who are like, oh, we exist in the matrix, bro. Yeah. So what? Can you expand that? Can you, can you, can you actually develop a philosophical you know, thesis or something based on this, it's actually interesting to think about. But if you just stop at, oh, we're in a matrix, so nothing matters. Okay, cool. You're 60 IQ, like tops. Most dogs are more intelligent than you because you are using the little intellect you have to create reasons as to why your life sucks because it just sucks in general and it doesn't matter. It's, it is just typical of that type of person. Typical. He's a skinny nerd who has just slight tinges of intelligence here and there that he most likely stole from pop culture and he thinks that it makes him superior which doesn't do anything to fix his inferiority complex so he spots all of that on a website a website that by the way he's constantly promoting with very passive aggressive sentences like yeah this website is great I let me let me find it i'm going to find it because it, it's all over the article so what he does is he writes something like, if you have been reading nerdyornot.com, in parentheses, an amazing site. Who does that? Only someone with very low self-esteem, right? Because he's trying to appear ironic and sarcastic, being like, oh yeah, so amazing. No, you're trying to pretend that you're not saying that to make yourself look better. But deep down, it's what you're doing because you're desperately in need of people's attention and acceptance which is why he stopped and ended with acceptance. And the last sentence is, am I wrong or not? I guess we'll all learn soon enough. How? I mean, I am the living proof that ectomorphism doesn't exist and that if you're skinny, yes, you can get big or very big. So your hashtag ectopower, I mean, hashtag cope power, I guess. And we're going to finish. I'm going to deal the finishing blow. With a comment that I read, it's underneath, someone asked him a question, was like, what was your best body comp? And he answers, 
get this, at my best, I was 160. Do I need to say more? 160. Why on earth would you take advice from someone who's 160 in terms of building muscle? Like, unless you're 5 feet 3, 160 is like unmeasurably small. Like, if I walked by that guy on the street, I wouldn't even see him. That's how small that is. No duh, you're getting dwarfed by women. You're 160. Most women are around that ballpark, at least where I live. So, yeah, he copes by saying he doesn't have great genetics. No, 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 no. You're just small. You didn't train hard enough or for long enough. And that's the reason why you're 160. I know 14 year old kids in my neighborhood who are heavier than that. So that's just unacceptable as a grown man. And if you're 160, understand I'm not saying that you're a wimp. I am saying, however, that you better be walking. You better be getting bigger. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to end with that. Um, I'm going to make more videos about nanionot.com because he provides a good basis for me to destroy stupid arguments that I hear people use to justify their shitty lives. I'm also going to at some point get one of these books and make like a very long review of the book. So I hope that you're actually looking forward to that. I will be signing out for tonight. Thank you for watching and see you soon.